G'day there. You're watching the Aussie BIM Guru, and today we're covering a topic that's been quite widely requested both in my professional career and also on my channel, um, which is how to align a Revit model to a DWG survey, um, and from AutoCAD typically. Uh, quite a complex process and involves coordinates. Um, so we're not going to cover shared coordinates in this video because that's quite a complex topic as well, and I'd rather dedicate a whole video to it. Um, this one will deal with the project coordinates instead. Um, which is basically the first step to establishing a shared coordinate system anyway. Um, but yeah, it's important to look at this one separately. So we're going to go through some fundamentals first. So coordinate systems, unit management, survey preparation, how to position CAD files in Revit, and also the ID command, uh, how to identify coordinates in AutoCAD, so we can align the two. So we're going to just start with the base points in a Revit model. So you may have seen these before, you may have not seen them. Um, they are invisible by default, which is why you might not have seen them. Uh, one of them is the project base point. So the project base point represents the origin of the project model coordinate system. Um, and it should be kept somewhere relative to the project itself, um, ideally to something relating to a building or a piece of scope that the, the project is introducing to the site. Um, or a grid intersection um, is a common use uh, for the project base point. Ideally, if you can uh, keep the project base point on the Revit model origin, which we'll cover shortly, that's even better because then you can work with pure origin to origin positioning methods, um, which we'll also cover shortly. Uh, the survey point is typically just a known surveyed point. Um, it's typically relative to a site and a coordinate system, um, such as the model grid of Australia, um, which is the MGA system because I, I work in Australia. Um, but it could also be moved to 000 once the project coordinate system has been established. Um, if you want to always be relative to uh, a datum, for example, of that grid system. So why can't we see them is a common question. Um, so by default in Revit, um, I've just set up a little building model here for our demonstration. If I go to visibility graphics or VG and I scroll down to site, the subcategories for these two elements are off by default in all views. If I enable them, you'll see they've just appeared. So these basically are sitting at what we call the Revit model origin um, or the startup location. So we've got a project base point. You can see it's clipped um, at the moment. If you change the clip state of the point, it lets you move the project base point uh, independently. And notice as I move it, its coordinates also change. Um, that's because it's not dragging the whole world with it. If I clip this, um, which I won't in this case, it actually moves the coordinate system with it which is pretty rare that you'll actually want to do that because it's quite a big move. Keep in mind that as I've moved this point, um, the survey point has remained where it is at 000. Uh, we'll just move that back. Note that also the project base point contains the angle to true north. So I'll just re-clip this. And if I just change my orientation to true north versus project north, if I change the orientation of angle to true north, my true north will rotate. So true north is up the page, project north is now rotated relative to that. Uh, note that the coordinate system hasn't changed really in the Revit internal coordinate system, only the world coordinate system or the shared coordinate system in this case. Uh, note when I say shared coordinate system, that's not necessarily the same thing as shared coordinates. Um, so don't get confused if I use that wording in this tutorial, we'll cover shared coordinates separately. Okay, um, so the other origin point that you've already heard me mention is the startup location or the Revit origin, um, which is really where the model starts within Revit's own internal coordinate space. Um, so this doesn't relate to coordinates in the world um, or geo coordinates. It's only relative to Revit's working environment. And it's important not to really move too far away from this point from your project scope. Because um, we'll, we'll cover a topic shortly, which is Revit's win window of comfort for how far away you should work from this point. And it's not as much as you'd think. Um, so one good way to deal with uh, finding this point if you've lost it is to take your project base point, right click it and go to move to startup location. And it will snap back to that point if it's unclipped. So technically that point never moves inside Revit. Everything else moves around it instead. It's important to note that if you're using uh, Dynamo, this is also the origin of the model, the way Dynamo sees it, no matter what. So you might need to translate that point um, to suit uh, so that you can get a geospatial coordinate instead. Um, so you might need to translate it based on the survey point, for example. Um, it's also good to mark and track where this point started uh, by putting reference plans on it and pinning them. And usually I name them something like North-South Startup and East-West Startup. So I've always got something to remind me of where that point was and I don't have to move my project base point back to it to find it. 
Um, so as I said, it's Dynamo's origin. So we'll just quickly look at project units in our Revit and AutoCAD um, versus drawn units in Revit and AutoCAD, which is really important to understand uh, because if I'm in Revit, um, you may know that if I put a dimension on this grid here and it's 8,000 millimeters, if I change my units to meters, um, we'll expect that to update to show us that it's eight meters instead. So note that my drawn and my project units relate to each other entirely. Um, as they change, so do all my dimensions and coordinates. However, in AutoCAD, if I take this basic survey and I measure this edge here, currently I'm in meters, this is 28 meters. If I change my units by going UN to millimeters, um, surprisingly, it doesn't affect our drawn units. That's still 28. Um, so that's quite a challenge in AutoCAD. So you really need to make sure you draw in the right units in AutoCAD. So it's always good to check your survey's units are in fact in meters as well as the coordinates in the model as well. So I did mention before you can check coordinates in AutoCAD by typing in ID. And as you hover over a point, you'll be able to get the easting and the, nor and the northing of that point respectively. So the first number is the easting or left to right and the northing is the next number, north to south. So if I pick this point here, um, you should get a command line. I've turned my command bar off currently, so I can't see it, but typically it would be within your, com your command bar as well. So important to understand that. Okay, so I've got a, just an example of a complex survey here. Um, it's not the one I'm gonna use today because it's a little bit too big and it's a little bit too slow, uh, but it's a good example of what you should look for uh, before you link the survey into your model because it's not really good practice just to link straight away. You should clean it up and have a look at it, understand the survey before you work with it. So some things that I look for, um, things you can see here are, one is the north marker. Um, is it facing up the page? Is it pointing the right way? Is it definitely north? And is your coordinate system set to world coordinate system? If so, you can be confident this is an appropriate true north reference to use in your Revit model when we rotate true north. Um, likewise, look for an easting and a northing. Um, for example, this point here, you can see has an annotated easting and a northing. Use the ID tool to check that it is in fact the correct easting and northing. Uh, quite often people might round or approximate uh, a less round number when they do this. Um, and also check one or two other points as well, just to make sure that the rotation hasn't counteracted the annotated eastings and northings. Because typically the annotated coordinates in AutoCAD are probably going to be less accurate than the lines themselves, given that most uh, surveyed elements these days are generated automatically using software. On top of that, just check for contours as well. So typically there'll be wavy lines across your site and check the elevation data in their properties to see if they actually do have vertical componentry because we can use that to turn them into a topo surface in Revit after. Um, also keep an eye out for property boundaries or site boundaries because they're quite important in Revit. It's good to usually set up your property boundary very early when you first align to a survey so that you have that constant reference um, in your Revit model and you can realign CAD files really easily to your model. Um, clean the file of things you don't need, such as all these text references, probably not necessary um, for a Revit survey for reference only. So it's good to either delete them or put them on a hidden layer. Um, it'll speed up your Revit model as well. <clears throat> and also cross-check the units of the file just to make sure that it is in fact in, the, in meters or a unit you'd expect it to be and that the coordinates are correct as well. So we've just got a really simple survey for reference um, that I've just put together in AutoCAD. So it's got a, a basic set of layers and the really important ones are the boundary, which is in dark blue here. Um, we've also got uh, just some basic site features, um, but we also have a layer called markers where we have the survey point, which is the corner of these two property boundary lines. And we've got an annotated coordinate written here. So if I just use ID and I'll hover over there, I can see that that annotated coordinate is correct to three figures um, on, in both the east and the north direction. I'm also going to check the units as well, just by going UN. I can see that it's going to scale in meters and I can quickly just do a quick line just to roughly gauge that it is in fact drawn in meters as well. So that's really important. Um, one other important thing, which we'll get to shortly, is just how to double check that your file is going to come into Revit properly. Um, you can also see here there's a true north area, which is in fact drawn up the page. and the world coordinate system is what this is set to currently. So I'm confident this is a good survey to use. Um, so we're gonna look at how to position the CAD file when we link it into Revit. Uh, we probably need to understand just a few settings before we do. So 
If we look at um, item one here, this is uh, the setting for whether you will need to change the import units. Um, so you can either scale a custom factor, which is quite rare, or you can tell Revit what the units are it should expect, which is the units that it's drawn in in AutoCAD. Um, and typically I prefer to set this manually. So if it's in meters, I'll tell Revit it's gonna be in meters. Cause I found that auto detect sometimes doesn't work and it brings it into the wrong type of unit. Um, Cause it has to make an assumption based on what it's, what it's reading out of the properties in AutoCAD. So I usually recommend just changing that to something specific. Um, two, usually I don't tick on correct lines that are slightly off axis. Surveys rarely have lines that are at 90 degrees or nice angles uh, because they are quite accurate and they are surveying conditions that usually aren't straight in the real world. So there's no need for Revit to fix these lines because it could be fixing things that are in fact correct. So usually turn this off. It's really important to note that under positioning, we have these, uh, these five methods of positioning CAD files. So in this case, we're really gonna mostly work with origin center to center and, and origin to origin for auto. Um, auto means that it will, it will assume how to place it for you based on the origins between CAD and Revit. Manual means that the next time you click, it will place it based on that method. Um, so typically, origin to origin usually works. Um, however, there will be some scenarios where it won't that I'll cover shortly. And that is when we have an extents issue. So this is a really common warning that you'll see when you're working with CAD files. And it's because Revit has a, a comfort zone that it works within, which is about 20 miles or 33 kilometers. I think it's in radius. And if you work with a file larger than this, Revit has to start graphically estimating how to show you this file because it's too large and it's too far away from the Revit origin. So that's why it's important to know where your Revit origin is. Um, so just keep that in mind when you're working with CAD files and surveys will nearly always be outside this extent because they're probably to a quite large number away from their, their um, relative datum point. Uh, in Australia, usually that's quite a long way away. Uh, definitely more than that. So typically, if, if DWG files are a greater extent than this, um, even if you tell them to come in origin to origin, they won't. They'll usually revert to center to center and they won't tell you they've done this either, um, which can be quite confusing. So just keep that in mind. Um, there's a couple of ways you can work with the extents issue in order to bring CAD files in. Um, the two main solutions, uh, one of which we'll look at today, is to delete any geometry around the origin in AutoCAD. Um, a good way to tell if this is happening is just to go into AutoCAD and do a zoom fit. And you can see now I can't see anything. So if I zoom out, I can see I've got a little bit of geometry around my origin and then I've got my survey. So let's just delete that geometry and do another zoom fit. And there we go. Now we know that our geometry is within a smaller confine. So if I just do a save as, and I'll just call that uh, base survey originated. Um, the other option for how we can deal with this, which is a bit more aggressive, is to pick up the whole survey and move it much closer to the origin. Um, if you do do this, just keep in mind that all your coordinates will technically be incorrect if you cross check any of them. So you just need to be mindful of when this has happened and make sure your team knows that you've done it as well so they don't make any assumptions about the coordinate system. Sorry, that's my cat. Uh, but usually I recommend option one. So we're gonna look at actually how to align the survey now and um, what you've all come here for, but I felt like that was really important to explain before we moved further in. Sorry, that's my cat again. Um, so we're going to look at how to do this. So first thing we're going to do is link in our CAD file and then we're going to move our survey into position in relation to our building. Um, so usually by the time we get a survey, the building's already been modeled um, in isolation. And typically it's been modeled with Project North up the page. Uh, so we're going to work under that assumption. So I'll just open up my Revit model and we've been working with Project North and True North up the page. So I'm just going to go to insert, link CAD. I'm going to tell it it's in meters. And I'm just going to do, I'll probably just do manual center in this case, because I know it's not going to come into origin to origin, the extents are too large. And I'll just turn off orient to view. Sorry, let's move my cat again. So we're just going to do base survey originated, and we'll go open. And the next time we click, it will place our survey. So obviously the rotation is not correct at the moment. In this case, I know that I want to align my site so that this edge of the site is two meters back. So I'm just going to move my survey. Notice I'm not moving my model. And then this, this other edge is going to also need to be back as well from this grid by two meters. 
We've got an interesting phenomenon occurring. I've noticed some of the data is graphically truncating still. Notice how the lines sort of dance around as you move in and out. Um, it can happen occasionally with large CAD files. One way to remedy this, um, like I said before, is you take all of your all of your data and we'll make a new CAD file and we'll just create a line at 000, paste in our CAD data and we'll move a point to zero zero zero. We'll just move our survey point to zero zero zero. So let's just save this as a new CAD file. Uh, we'll just do this originated too. And that should stop all of our data from truncating. So we'll just actually unload this link. It's actually good that happened because now I get to show you both ways to fix that problem. Now if I bring that in, Center to center, manual center, meters. We should expect that that data will now remain in place. And there you go, that's much more stable. Um, so we're gonna have to work uh, with coordinates from another version of the survey, given that we know them based on the survey where the coordinates are correct when we align. That's okay. So we'll just get this where we want it to be related, related to our site. Keep in mind that no BIM manager should ever have to tell you how to place your building on a site. That's all up to you. Um, typically they won't have an answer for you because it's all project specific and it's based on setbacks. All those sorts of things. Okay, so we'll just pin. And at that point, we're just gonna create our property boundary as well under massing and site, property line, and we'll just create by sketching. Pick line. And there we go. So now we have a property boundary. So if this CAD file was ever to become unlinked, we have a way to at least know where the CAD file should be positioned by using some simple alignments. Okay, but the next thing we need to do is set our true north. So at the moment, project north and true north are still both up the page. Um, so we've got to this stage, we've aligned our survey to the building. So now we need to rotate true north. So the true north is up the page when we're in true north orientation and project north is always relative to the building's position. So we're gonna basically rotate the world around the base point underneath the building. So our building's not gonna move but the whole world is going to move underneath it, if that makes sense. Sort of like moving a tablecloth under a cup, if that makes sense. Okay, so we're going to go up to our Manage tab, and we're going to use a tool. But before we do, we're going to rotate around our project base point. So we're going to get a line to rotate by. So we're just going to do a pick line, and we're going to take our true north arrow. So ideally, we want to rotate this so that it's up the page. So we're going to rotate from the current line, up, up to up the page. So we're going to go manage. We're going to go up here to the project location tab and we're going to select the, I think it's the bottom button. And we're going to go rotate true north. If you're not in true north at the moment, it will prompt you to enter true north orientation. So say yes. So you want to pick that line that you've just copied and we're going to rotate up, up the page. So now if we go to our true north arrow, we should expect to see that facing up the page. It's not quite facing up the page, so I just might do that a bit more carefully. See, I didn't quite get that on the origin. Always good to be very careful when you do these tasks. Um, obviously, I'm rushing a bit because I'm doing a training video. So we'll just do that again. Okay, now that's perfectly up the page. So if I go true north, it looks good. If I go project north, my project north is still intact and everything stayed the same in the model itself. So my, my site boundary rotates with this as well. So that's really important to understand. Um, you can rotate project north, but it's actually gonna go and rotate all the model geometry in your entire project when you do that. So you only wanna do that if you absolutely have to, and it's very rare that that will happen. And you can also relocate a whole project uh, by a vector shift, uh, which will move everything except the Revit origin, basically. So just um, keep in mind those tools are available, but use them very carefully and very sparingly. Okay, so we've rotated true north. Um, the next thing we need to do is specify a coordinate uh, in order to move the world coordinate system to the right position in the X and the Y direction. So we've got our true north and our project north. Now we need our X and our Y. And this is always the best sequence to do these steps in. So the best way to do this is just to use a simple tool under the Manage tab in the second button called Specify Coordinates at Point. So I'm just going to click on this point. And now it will say Specify Shared Coordinates. Um, don't worry, it's not 
going to trigger shared coordinates in your project. Um, so what I've done already is I've just taken the coordinates of our survey point as annotated and by using the ID tool and I've copied them to notepad. So I'm just going to take our easting and keep in mind that we're working in meters here, but we're working in millimeters in Revit. So you're going to want to round, you're going to want to move the, the decimal place three points in both of these. So our easting is our X or our east west and our northern is our, our y or our north south and we can just go okay at that point so what we should expect to happen there is our project base point will stay where it is but its coordinates will update however our survey point is going to move to where it was before so in this case it's at zero 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 what we're going to do is just pick up our survey point by unclipping it and we're going to move it and we're going to move it to our surveyed point so we're just going to zoom in and we're going to move it onto that property boundary corner. And because it's unclipped, its coordinates won't be forced upon the project. Instead, it will move to that point in the coordinate system. Then we can clip it and pin it. So now we have X and Y coordinates set up. So it's quite easy, actually, that process. It just, it's just those three steps in order that you need to know. Um, from here, I always say it's best practice to triangulate. So pick two points um, that you didn't use to line up the survey and just check that they're the same or almost the same. Um, Revit's a little bit approximate in how it deals with rotation of true north. So you might be out by one or two millimeters on two triangulated points. Um, so an easy way to, to uh, test two points is just to go specify coordinates at point. I'll just unpin in order to do that. And you just click it, but you don't change it obviously. Um, you just you, We're just reviewing, so we'll go cancel once we've looked at this. So I've got that point already. And I think I've taken that one down here. Three, three, four, four. I believe I have that point. I'll just cross check that one again. Six, two, five, one, eight, four. Oh, just lost that point. Six, two, five, one, oh, four, six, oh, seven, three, 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 four, four, seven, oh, four, four, two. Okay. Uh, okay, I've actually made an error here. I just realized I've specified the coordinates incorrectly. I specified the corner of the site at the grid intersection. So what I need to actually do here is specify the coordinates here instead. I was wondering why that was coming up incorrectly. I also like to keep um, most of my errors in my videos just so you can see where slip ups can occur um, and you can see how I counteract them. Okay, so we'll just cross check that coordinate there to make sure that is now correct. And it looks like that has picked up our coordinate properly. So we should expect to be able to triangulate those points as well now with the correct coordinates. So I'll just move that back onto that point. So we're gonna check this corner here, specify coordinates at this corner, and we'll just check our reference point. And we can see that that's almost the same. It looks like it's rounded the same way. So there, that's actually matching that point. And I've also checked this point over here in AutoCAD already as well using the ID tool. And there we go, that's also the same. Uh, looks like we're off by about half a millimeter in both aspects, but um, I'm quite comfortable that we can handle that slight discrepancy due to the angle rotation in Revit. So at this point, I'm confident that my X, Y coordinates and uh, also my true north rotation are correct in my project. So technically we're aligned in coordinates at the moment, which is great. Um, but the last thing that we need to do now is actually check the levels of the project. So it's always good to go back into your survey if you haven't already and just cross check the elevation aspect of the project. So if I just hold down shift and middle click, I can see that my, my CAD file actually has 3D aspects to it. So a lot of things aren't actually flat, including my contours. So if I just check their properties by right clicking and going to properties, I can see that they have elevations. So because they have elevations, we can actually generate a topo surface from them, which is great. Um, what you might want to do is take a section through your site as well. And you may want to set up a, another level um, in order to establish ground level. So what I usually recommend doing is taking ground floor and actually elevating ground floor instead of creating a new floor. That's so like all your floor plans you've already got set up, move with your ground floor. So you'll need to do some research to figure out what height your site's ground should be at. And then usually you just copy that level back down 
by whatever you moved it by. And just call this level something like datum. And this is really the base of the project. And it's really important at that point to take your CAD file and reassociate its base to datum so that it's sitting at the right height. So to generate a topo surface is actually really easy. So you just go manage, oh sorry, mass, massing and site, topo surface, create from import, select uh, import instance, and you select your CAD file and you'll get this selection box around it. And at that point, it will prompt you to pick which layers are gonna generate the topo surface. And it's gonna source the vertices along all the polylines and lines and shapes uh, within those layers you pick. So in this case, all I need is my contour layer. So I'll okay that. And you'll see it's found all the points along those lines and the elevations they occur at. And it's generated the topo surface to match, um, which is great. And to be doubly sure that it's worked, you can always take your imported object in visibility graphic settings and just isolate the contours and have a look at them and see if they're sitting on there. And I'm looking at that and that, that's that's pretty good. Everything looks like it's sitting on on there. Obviously my ground isn't quite right, um, just, just an example. Uh, but yeah, I can see that that's pretty much coincident that's sitting on the topo. So that's how you'd situate uh, your topography from your survey. Um, some surveys may not have uh, elevated contours. In that case, you may need to draw them or elevate them yourself in AutoCAD if possible. So just be mindful that sometimes that will happen, especially with older surveys. Um, I'll also just quickly run through relativity of coordinates. It's really important to understand how your coordinate systems function versus your spot coordinates and your spot elevations. So if I just take a spot coordinate, I've set up three types here. So I've got one called relative, one called project base point, and one called survey point. So if I just create a relative spot coordinate, it's actually going to be relative to the Revit model origin. So if I just create one over here, um, and I move my project base point by unclipping it, we shouldn't expect it to change because it's always relative to the model origin. Obviously, this isn't usually a very reliable reference point. And the way this is controlled is in the type properties of the spot coordinate. And there's, a, there's an, a setting called coordinate origin down the bottom where you have relative project base point or survey point. Likewise, um, spot elevations have the same settings. However, if I take um, the project base point style, we should expect that it's going to be relative to our project base point. I might just check our units very quickly. Millimeters. I believe this is in meters by the looks of it. No, it's in millimeters. Interesting. I'll just check the relativity settings. Ah, it's set to relative, that's why. So if I set this to project base point, as my project base point moves around, we should expect that these numbers change. And there you go, you can see that there. I'll just take that back there and clip it. And our last setting, as you expect, is our survey point. And if I take that survey point style and I change from relative to survey point, now note, it didn't work like you probably expected it to. In this case, um, it sources the coordinate system. Um, so you can see here that it's going back from zero, zero, zero uh, in relation to the overall survey coordinates of the project. Um, if you wanted to do a relative point, this is where you'd need to take advantage of either the Revit origin, but more likely the project base point. So if you want it to be relative to this corner, you'd probably need to set your project base point instead and then move it to here and use project base point coordinates instead to be relative to that point. Uh, but it's pretty rare that we work that way in Revit. Typically, we'll just take true and correct coordinates uh, depending on the project scope. Uh, but I think that's pretty much everything for this uh, this workflow. Um, so again, note this isn't a shared coordinate setup. Um, that's coming in another video, um, pretty pretty shortly, probably one or two videos time. So just hold tight if you're waiting for that one. Um, but that's all for today. So hopefully that helps articulate the workflow. That can be quite complicated and um, easy to forget. Um, hopefully this video helps and you can come back to it whenever you forget. If you've got any questions or queries about um, what I've covered today, feel free to leave it down below and any requests for future videos. Um, if you're not following and subscribing, feel free to do so. And thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.